I'm there. You're taking a holy name. But because of what they said in the media about that name, Muhammad would rather be called the name of a clown. Just call me Mo. Bilal becomes Billy. Aisha becomes Andy. Because of all this negativity. And what happens is, what happens is, when we see that when we see this negativity about Islam, all this negativity about Islam, and we see ourselves as Muslims, we start developing a self-hate towards ourselves. As any African American, there used to be a time, kind of like today, but especially back in the day, if you used to call an African American an African, you better be ready to fight. If you call a black person an African, you better be ready to fight. You call an African, I will. You don't look French, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, this is Africa. Why? Because the image of Africa was made so negative to us. Malcolm broke it down to us. The image of Africa was made so negative to us, we don't want to be associated with Africa. Now what's happening today is that the image of Islam is being made so negative that some of our youth don't want to be associated with Islam. And so we got this Islamophobia thing jumping off. But guess, guess what else is jumping off while Islamophobia is jumping off? There is an Islamic awakening taking place all over the world, including Amrika. <laughs> an Islamic awakening taking place all over the world. Ain't none of y'all ever experienced like going back home? Y'all never experienced like you went back home, right? Wherever back home was, and when you went back home, your relatives was tripping off the fact that you was demon. Demon means like practicing. We say demon. Right? You experience that? You go back home to a country that's 98, 99% Muslim. They know that you're coming from America. You go back home, coming from America, and you demon? What? You practicing Islam more than we are. We, we in the country of 98% Muslim. You coming from America. You're supposed to come here with green hair. Tattoos all over your face, you know what I'm saying? Green lipstick or something. You supposed to be coming back here with some crazy stuff. And you coming back demon because they don't understand that what is coming out of Amrika is Islam. And so in spite of the negativity and the Islamophobia and Islam is bad, Islam is bad, look what Allah is doing. I read an article the other day that in the last 10 years in the UK, you know, Britain, United Kingdom, so-called, right? That a hundred thousand people became Muslim. They said 75% of that hundred thousand was women. Western women from Britain becoming Muslim. That the most common name in Britain is Muhammad. The most common name in Britain is Muhammad. In spite of the Islamophobia, in spite of the attacks, in spite of all this negativity, Islam is still making a move because Islam, as we say, is like a ball. If you take a ball and you drop it, it comes up so high. If you take that same ball and slam it to the ground, it comes up higher and faster. If you leave Islam alone, it's coming up. If you take Islam and slam it to the ground, Muhammad, he's not a prophet, the Quran, the Quran, Allah. Allah is not the same God as ours, right? You take Islam and slam it to the ground, it's come up higher and faster. That's the nature of this book. And so for you young people who are here, you're going through something. You're going through something. You're going through beside you, and Islamic awakening is taking place. Keep on coming. You're a part of history, and you may not even know that you're a part of history. But there's something inside of you. There's something inside of you that's waking up to your Islamic identity. In spite of this time that we're living in, there's something inside of you that's waking up within you. Keep on coming. Because what we need are Muslim youth who are proud to be Muslim. What's your name? Muslim youth who are proud to be Muslim. This is not time for y'all to go in the closet. We need Muslim youth who are proud to be Muslim. And who are proud enough to represent their demon in school, in the classroom, in the schoolyard, who will, who, will, who will be proud to represent their demon. That in spite of what the, what the, what the media is saying, no, I'm Muslim, I'm Muslim. Don't hide. Stop hiding. Some of us are hiding. Some of us can pass for 
Latinos or something. We're not Muslim. A lot of Latinos coming to Islam though. But some of some of y'all some of y'all can pass. So some of y'all trying to pass. Right? But no, that's not what time it is. That's not what time it is. And we have to be very careful, my respected brothers, we have to be very careful of putting ourselves in a situation where living in this time that we're living in, the women are looking more like Muslims than we are. That's very dangerous. It's very dangerous for the men. And I'm talking particularly the young men. Right? Like it's like this. It's like this. All right? Because we're living in a time of Islamophobia and the sisters are out there in the public and they looking like Muslims in this time of Islamophobia. Now what Allah is going to do for them is Allah is going to give them a certain type of strength. Allah is going to kick them down, a certain type of strength. When we do not do that, what happens is that is we become weak. We become weak. All right? And so what happens is that after a while, we'll see that the sisters start taking on like stronger positions than the men. Which is sort of like me being home with my wife late at night, and we're sleeping. And she nudges me. And she says, Abdul Malik, I heard something downstairs. I said, did you? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, baby, go downstairs, check it out. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, type of thing, right? Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting behind her, and she's getting in the front. But when we're, in this, when we're in a situation, a rough situation, a rich hunt type situation, and our sisters are out there looking like Muslims, and we are not, that's what we're doing. It's kind of rough out there. It's kind of, okay, yeah, no, no, okay, so yeah, just throw your jab on, get on out there. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, cool, go ahead. And we, will, and we will go ahead and stand behind them. Be careful of that, brothers. Be careful of that. Be very, very careful of that. Right? And sisters, don't think that if you come on the brothers, I'm letting y'all fill up. It is not time for us to become weak. And parents, we have to stop teaching our children fear. We have to stop teaching them fear. We have to stop teaching them to fear something other than Allah. Because for one thing, parents, they see. Don't think that these young people can't see the precarious position, the unstable position that their parents are in. That at any time, at any time, their father can be picked up, put in jail, and held indefinitely without any type of charges. That can happen right now. That can happen right now to anybody's father who's in this room. Anybody's father, grandfather, uncle, right now. Don't you, don't you think, parents, that your children are seeing that type of situation? You think they're supposed to like that situation? They're seeing how hard you work. They're seeing what good people their parents are. And their parents are being depicted in the media as if they're some type of terrorist. Do you think your children can stay quiet about that? You expect your children to stay quiet about that? The only way that your children can stay quiet about that is if they hate you. You know, like in America, once you reach a certain age, you're to hate your parents. <laughs> and it's a culture. It's a culture. Like before puberty, before puberty, I love my dad. Dad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? And as, and, as, and, as, and as soon as you reach puberty, I hate my father. I hate my father. Right? I hate my mother. Right? It's a part of the culture. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Because it's so dangerous because when, once you reach Mukallaf, once you reach, like, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't say, oh, he's a teenager, let the boy go, right? Once you reach Mukallaf, once you're a young man and a young woman, you are accountable to Allah. Allah don't play that when you're just a teenager. No problem. Allah don't play that. You are a young adult now. Now, you got a little bit of experience as an adult, yes. You're a brand new adult, yes. But you're an adult. And therefore, Allah is going to hold you accountable like an adult. Now, now, now when, as soon as these young people reach Muhammad, as soon as they reach puberty, they're taught to commit some of the most major sins. And so now, since they're Muhammad, while they're young adults, they got to hate their parents. Major sin. I think that's like number three on the major sin list. Right? Then they got to separate sex from marriage. And then they got to become materialistic. Materialistic, like materialistic. It's not about the masjid. Their masjid now becomes the mall. And they go to the mall, put on their best clothes, go to the mall, make tawaf around the mall seven times. <laughs> <laughs> before they go in. Oh, before they go in, they got to make tawaf around that bad boy, right? right? That's the mall. That's the mall, right? And so they're taught to, to, to adopt a materialistic ideology. Everything's materialism. 
materialism, materialism. Once materialism becomes your god, you'll never stand up for truth. You ain't gonna wanna do dawa. Once material things become your god, you're not gonna stand up for justice. Your god is material things. And then they get you to commit other forms of shirk. The most common form of shirk here, the most common form of shirk is celebrity worship. <laughs> Celebrities are worshipped, not respected, worshipped. They talk in the language. Who's your idol? Kobe. American idol. Right? Celebrities are worshipped here. We know more about celebrities than we do about the Sahaba. We know the Sunnah of Kobe. We know the Sunnah of Bamsi, Beyonce, whatever her name is. We know their Sunnah. We know their Sunnah. I mean, their whole lifestyle, what they eat for breakfast, how they dress. It's, uh, it's about celebrity worship here. It's about celebrity worship. Another way of making our minds light. We worship celebrities. Y'all, as young people, you have a much greater destiny. Each generation must find a historical mission, someone said. Each generation must find a historical mission and either fulfill it or betray it. The missing pieces in your lives is that for some of you, you're not fulfilling your historical mission. As youth, you're not fulfilling your historical mission. And so parents, stop putting fear into the youth. Because once you put fear into them, you're getting them used to fearing something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> and just like many of our Latino young brothers and sisters who are seeing their parents being depicted as terrorists, and, the par and, and these children saying, my parents are not terrorists, so too many Muslim youth are taking the same position. Our parents are not terrorists. My father shouldn't have to live in a state of insecurity. My father, he should not live like this. So stop putting fear into them and encourage them to stand up and do this dawah, to do this dawah, make this dawah. Because check this out, all too often as parents, we, it's like we don't want our children caught up in that jahiliya, but yet we don't want them to do the dawah either. Whoa, 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 hold on. We don't want them caught up in the jahiliya, but we don't want them to do the Islamic work. The Islamic work like Brother Bilal was talking about earlier the different things they have going on here. We don't want our children to do the Islamic work, but we don't want them caught up in the jahiliyyah. Guess what protects them from the jahiliyyah? The Islamic work. That's what protects them from the jahiliyyah. That in this time of, of people suffering, that you, you, have, you have groups like Maideen who are actually thinking about other people. Here's how we put it. We say this. We say, sharpen the mind, harden the body, soften the heart. Sharpen the mind, harden the body, soften the heart. What's the fourth one? Being of service. Being of service to others. Not thinking about yourselves, but thinking about the plight of other people. Thinking about what other people are going through. Each generation must find their historical mission and either fulfill it or betray it. Do not allow the missing piece to your lives to be us living lives we're not making any type, type of contribution to this deal. No type of contribution. Because I promise you, if we don't do it, no matter how much fun we have, no matter how much materials that we have, there will always be something missing. There will always be something missing. But once you do it for Allah, and you get involved with Allah, watch what happens. Thank you very much for um, listening. Uh, nice seeing y'all. Like I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Allahu Akbar! Take beer! Take beer! Take beer!